in continuation to the last session uh, let's see a few more session properties uh, the first one is stop on errors for this class so uh, by default uh, it is zero and uh, so it is there in the config object tab and uh, the good practice is to make it one so that the session should fail on the first error if you put it zero it would load all the bad records to the reject file uh, which is specified in the target properties in under the reject file directory uh, so let's first see what happens if we put one and then if we put zero I'm going to save this and uh, I, I will create a primary key on the target uh, using on the employee ID so alter table employees add primary key using index emp idx so I have created the primary key uh, on employee ID that means we cannot insert duplicates on employee ID so let me try to insert some duplicate on the source table so since I don't want to touch the source table I'll create one more table emp underscore test as select star from employees in HR schema so this I'm going to insert duplicate record in EMP test so this EMP test is going to have 107 records so I will insert a duplicate record for employee ID 122 for example insert into EMP test so when uh, where employee ID equal to 122 so when uh, the flow comes to when the Informatica is loading till this record it should fail because we have a unique constraint we have a primary key on this column on the target table so let's see so now I need to give input uh, the source table as EMP test and not EMP uh, not employees HR dot employees it should be HR dot employee EMP underscore test so that I can give in uh, the sources in the mapping tab so because the structure of e employees and EMP test is same I can uh, uh, give it directly in this tab so I saved the session and let me run this session now and see what is going to happen the session has failed as we can see here and the error is cannot drop the index used for primary key okay let me uh, so earlier I gave the post SQL and pre SQL so let me just remove them for a moment so I'm done explaining with for that concept so just I'm reverting back to the mapping properties I'm not giving any pre SQL post SQL I want to demonstrate now stop on errors uh, property so I'm removing pre SQL post SQL and I'm running again now so the session failed again this time saying okay it has an index defined on it the table has an index defined on it okay let me remove the bulk property also uh, and then run this again if I have bulk it is failing even before loading any record so I cannot see what is the effect of stop on errors so as you can see it has failed saying unique constraint violated uh, but how many uh, records are loaded into the target there are no records loaded into the target because uh, we have given stop on errors as one so let's see below yeah it is saying unique constraint violated so and it is giving the record as well where it failed because we have inserted this record two times in the source table so it is expected that it will fail and it failed on the first error so because we have given uh, stop on errors as uh, one here in the config object tab so let's see if we modify this to zero what is going to happen and before that let's quickly look at the reject file once so this is the bad file and let's see what is there in the bad file so it is already loaded to the bad file so the bad the record which uh, came twice uh, which I inserted twice in the source table is loaded into the bad file here and uh, it is loaded into the bad file here and uh, uh, the se session failed at the first error itself so let me close this and I've made stop on errors as zero now and uh, let me see what is the effect of this 
So if I run the session now, all the good records where there is no duplicates in source should still uh, go to the target and only the bad record should go to the uh, bad reject file. Only the duplicate record should go to the reject file. So let's see how it uh, happens. So you see here, not only uh, 107 records got loaded into the target, but the session also succeeded because we have not given stop on errors as one. We have given it as zero. That means allow any number of errors and uh, load all the good records and load the bad records into the bad file. So let's see the bad file now. So this is the bad file directory and so bad file always gets appended. So one more record got added to the bad file compared to the previous one. So that means uh, in this run as well one more record got added but all the good records went into the target and the session got succeeded. So it's a good practice to when the, if the session succeeds and the workflow succeeds nobody will really care to look at uh, what is the what the error is uh, because the jobs will be running in the middle of the night during uh, night times when the uh, when the development team and not many people are around so only normally when only when uh, the session uh, fails s some support team who is monitoring that will take a note of it and will uh, tend to look at the ba uh, reason for the error and correct the error so it is not a great idea generally to give in most of the cases to give stop on errors as zero it's always better to give it as one so that it will stop at the first error Next we will see a property called commit interval. By default the commit interval is set to 10,000. So that means if you have more number of records, if you have millions of records uh, coming from the source, the target will be committed at every 10,000 uh, records. So if, we, if you keep querying in Oracle or any data, ta the target database, you will only see after every 10,000 the records getting committed. So if uh, 6500 records for example get uh, loaded into the target you don't see anything because the commit has not executed but if uh, more than 10,000 12,000 records got loaded for example you will see 10,000 until 20,000 happens so the commit happens again by default it is 10,000 so you can increase it if you want when you are doing bulk loads and uh, loading a large number of records so the default value is normally 10,000 10, so there is another property uh, truncate and load which we have seen earlier so if you uh, select this option truncate uh, target table option right so it will basically truncate the target table before loading the target so this is useful for staging tables where we are pulling data every day incrementally from the source and loading uh, truncating and loading uh, only we, we are having only today's data at any point of time so for those cases this option is really useful uh, so but the only thing is the uh, user or the oracle's user with which you are connecting to uh, the Informatica uh, with the Informatica connection to the target is using some Oracle user so that user should have privilege to truncate this table else this would fail here only.